guys, welcome to your lecture notes on photosynthesis. You should have gotten your guided note sheet in class. I'm going to need you guys to watch this video and fill them in as we go along. So, so far we've talked about characteristics of life. We've done your macromolecules. We've done your cell organelles. And now we're going to move into talking about transport. We're going to start off transport with talking about photosynthesis today. So let's just jump right into it. So who uses photosynthesis? That's going to be autotrophs. And if we break down this word, auto just means self and troph means to eat. So if we are an autotroph, we are going to be making our own food. So these will be plants and organisms that can make their own food. Particularly their food is going to come in the form of glucose, which is a sugar. Now, a lot of times when we think about organisms making their own food, that's going to be plants. We all know that plants do photosynthesis. They make oxygen for us to breathe. But there are some other photosynthetic organisms that we need to know about as well, particularly bacteria. There are some bacteria that can perform photosynthesis, and they do contain chloroplasts in their cytoplasm. So what is photosynthesis exactly? This is just the process by which plants make food. Again, their food that they're making comes in the form of a sugar. And we know this from unit two, our macromolecules. Remember, sugar is a carbohydrate, and we get our starches from plant material. So this is how those plants actually make their food. So this process takes place in the chloroplast. It's important for us to know that this is happening in the chloroplast. So remember, it's that organelle that's located in plants and photosynthetic organisms. So they use energy from sunlight to make sugar, which is glucose. And that glucose is spelled wrong. It should be G-L-U-C-O-S-E. So the energy source for this process actually comes from the sun. And again, the food source that plants are creating is going to be that sugar. We're then going to take that sugar and later go into a cellular process that we'll learn about tomorrow known as cellular respiration. And that is what animals do to actually make their own energy source. So remember, we as animals, we can't make our own food. So we have to perform cellular respiration to make energy in the form of ATP. The energy source that we have to eat, so we have to get our energy from elsewhere, is going to come from plant material. So when we're talking about photosynthesis today, the plants are making the food that we will eventually eat, which will get broken down and then processed into ATP. So respiration is going to use the glucose from the plants and convert it into that cellular energy. And guys, I need you to remember that ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So that triphosphate means that there's three phosphate molecules or three phosphates on the molecule itself. So again, where does photosynthesis take place? It's in the chloroplast. They're present in plants. The chloroplast is this little green organelle. And if we look on the screen, we've got our outer membrane, our inner membrane, and then on the inside of our chloroplast, we have something called thylakoids. They look like stacked pennies, except they're green. Um, and this is where your reactions for photosynthesis are actually going to take place. So why are plants green? When we think about plants in general, we know that they're green. Think of grass, think of leaves on trees. They're actually green because of a pigment known as chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is the pigment located in the chloroplast. So I don't want you guys to get confused about the difference between chlorophyll and chloroplast. Chlorophyll is the pigment. Plants are actually green because the wavelength of the green light is reflected, not absorbed. So if you guys don't know how color works, Whenever you see a color of any kind of object with your eyes, you're not actually seeing that color. What you're seeing is the wavelength of light that is reflected. So for green plants, what you're seeing is those plants actually absorb every single color in the light spectrum except for green. We see them as green because that wavelength of green light is being reflected back to us. And that's true for any color of any object. But today we're focusing on plants. So if we look at this graph here for absorption of light by chlorophyll, on our left-hand side, we have the actual absorption. And then on the bottom, we have our wavelength. So remember, whenever we're looking at graphs, our independent variable is going to go on the x, and our dependent variable is going to go on the y. So if we look at our absorption rate and then our actual colors on the bottom, we see that our chloroplasts and our chlorophyll are actually absorbing violet light, blue light. It peaks around blue, also red. But if we see where the wavelength is at green, 
it dips down really low, that's our indication that it is not absorbing that green wavelength of light and it's actually being reflected back. And that's why we see plants as green. So when does photosynthesis take place? We already know that autotrophs need sunlight in order to capture that energy. So photosynthesis will be taking place during the daylight hours, right? We have to have the energy from the sun to do photosynthesis. So typically it will take place during the day. Now photosynthesis is always happening all over the earth because it's always daylight somewhere, but in your own area it will vary at which times photosynthesis is taking place. All right, so here are your checkpoint questions for this first little bit of photosynthesis. What I want you guys to do is pause the video, make sure you can answer these questions, and then once you can, go ahead and move on and continue filling in your notes. All right, so why do we do photosynthesis? So we have to convert unusable energy to usable energy. The sunlight gives us energy, but we can't use it. We, there's no way for us as humans or any living organisms on the planet to absorb sunlight and use it immediately in the form that it comes and falls on the earth. So plants have to convert it into sugar, and then we have to eat that sugar and convert it into energy for ourselves. So it's just gotta be converted to a usable form. And again, the whole point of photosynthesis is that these photosynthetic organisms like plants are making their own food, which is gonna be glucose, which is sugar. And that is a usable form of energy. So what is the equation for photosynthesis? We need to know this. Remember, anytime we're talking about chemical equations, your reactants go on the left-hand side and then your products go on the right. So if we think about our house plants, think about what you have to give your plants. So if you've ever taken care of a plant, we all know that we have to water our plants, right? And typically, if we have a plant, we want to stick it somewhere where it's going to get some amount of sunlight. Now, different plants will vary on how much they need, um, but typically you're going to want to give your plants water and sunlight. So we know that two of the reactants are H2O and sun, but plants also absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So our equation is going to be CO2 plus H2O, so carbon dioxide plus water, plus sunlight will yield the food, which is glucose, so C6H12O6, plus oxygen. So oxygen is actually a byproduct of photosynthesis, and that's what we breathe from the atmosphere. We need oxygen from plants. There are also a lot of photosynthetic bacteria in the ocean that will produce oxygen as well. So if for some reason we lost all the plants on the planet, we would not lose all of the oxygen in the atmosphere because there are other photosynthetic organisms as well. So again, CO2 plus water plus sunlight will give us C6H12O6, which is glucose, which is sugar, plus oxygen. So again, reactants on the left-hand side are reactants what go into this process. Carbon dioxide, also written as CO2, water, which is H2O, and sunlight. And remember that sunlight is the energy source. We can't use it. It's not usable energy. It's going to have to be converted into a usable source. And then the products of photosynthesis are going to be sugar and oxygen. So that sugar, again, in the form of glucose, which is C6, H12O6 and oxygen, oxygen gas, it always exists as a gas, it's O2. So here are your checkpoint questions number two. I'm going to need you guys to pause this video, make sure you can answer these questions before you move forward and finish filling out your notes. All right, so the last thing we're going to go over today is the factors that actually affect your rate of photosynthesis. So how quickly is photosynthesis happening? How much glucose is being produced? So these three things are going to be your light intensity. So how much light is available for absorption? This is going to be your sunlight. Two, your carbon dioxide concentration. So how much CO2 is in the atmosphere. And finally, your temperature. So how hot is it outside? What is going on with the temperature outside? So typically, as these three things increase, you will also see an increase in photosynthesis as well. Okay. And the efficiency of ATP formation, we actually make ATP when we do cellular respiration, and we'll talk about that um, tomorrow. But what I need you guys to know for photosynthesis, it does use ATP to produce sugars. So yes, we are making um, food for the plant through photosynthesis, but photosynthesis also has to use ATP. So when we go to talk about cellular respiration, we need to understand that our plants, even though they're making their own food through photosynthesis, they're also going to have to turn around and use some of that food to make ATP as well, because they have to have sugar 
and they have to have energy in order to carry out their processes and their sales just like we do. All right, and here is your third and final checkpoint. I need you guys to pause the video, make sure you can answer these questions. If you have any questions for me, make sure you come to class tomorrow with them ready to ask so we can move on in cellular respiration. I will see you guys tomorrow and I hope you guys have a great evening.